So then let's look at one more thing and then uh, we'll kind of go through some of the chat a little bit and then we'll go into that last video about ownership. So this is kind of where it stands right now. So on WFG side, they, they break it down into a bunch of different categories. It's kind of like a catch-all. They're doing the same thing um, with some of the political stuff right now. They kind of just throw everything against the wall and then kind of see what fits because you got to remember they're bringing the suit before they have a lot of information. So they're talking about breach of contract, tortious interference, uh, co civil conspiracy, which means multiple people are conspiring to do things, unjust enrichment, and then conversion, and then also this Code of California Conduct 17200. So in that, what we're looking for in the lawsuit, right, if we're trying to determine right and wrong, okay, on WFG side, they're saying, well, we have a non-solicitation clause, and in that, you're not supposed to go back and you're not supposed to talk to agents, and you're not supposed to talk to clients. And so some things that add weight to their, their side of it is, well, why are people signing NDAs? If they're not soliciting these agents, why do we have NDAs that people are having to sign? Why are there firewalls that when we recruit WFG agents over that we have to have them sign it that they don't speak out against us for the things that we're doing, which all is kind of weird, right? Like you wouldn't do that uh, normally if you were doing things the right way. So are these things happening, question mark, up to your decision as far as that goes? Are they targeting WFG agents and are they targeting WFG clients? And you can watch the videos and kind of make that decision up to yourself. Um, Non-disparagement. So are you telling lies or falsehoods or things against WFG that are inaccurate? So there were uh, questions about ownership. If you remember that video again with Joanna, um, they talked about, you know, you don't own anything in WFG, which we found that to be inaccurate. Uh, they said lies about Thali going to GFI, which we found out that was inaccurate on, on January uh, 17th. Lies about GFI ownership. A lot of these guys were promised if you come over, we'll give you 1% of the company. They're now at like 7,000 agents. How do you give 7,000 agents 1%? You can't really do that. So who gets the 1%? Um, does Olson keep 51% and then give away 49? I, I don't know. We haven't seen any of that in the paperwork. We've looked through both the um, GFI contract and their EMD contract. It says nothing about percentage of ownership. It doesn't mean he couldn't be doing that behind the scenes. Uh, maybe Welsh got some of that for helping to start the company. I don't know. Um, and then also about corporate backing, they were talking about SGI and them being the backers as far as uh, being able to do some securities products or whatever it might be. That obviously was inaccurate. They said that they don't have the proper licenses to be that person, but it doesn't mean they couldn't do it in the future. So let's see. Maybe some of these things will come out. Maybe it Three months, Dolly will say, ha ha, I was just kidding. I did go over to GFI. I don't know. So let's see if these things end up being true or not. And then also supposed lies about product providers coming over. Is Nationwide and Prudential and all these other guys, are they going to be coming over to GFI? We haven't seen that yet. Um, and then there's talk about confidential information. As far as WFG structure, I think that's really weak. Everybody knows WFG structure, even if you're not in WFG. Um, it's been copied so many times now that um, it just is what it is. But was there confidential information around client information, uh, around agent information? Basically, they were taking leaders' bulletins, and, and when you're part of the danger of straddling the fence and the anchor like strategy is that you have all of the information of those former agents to then go prospect them and recruit them over to GFI. It also has the leader's bulletin, so you can tell which ones to go target, which ones are better at recruiting, which ones have more production, and who to go talk to. And if they don't work with you, who's underneath them that I can go recruit that person so you have to come over with them. So is that considered confidential information and are you allowed to do that? And then client information, because that's confidential as well. And so we saw the video I think it was Janira who was talking about that and them asking, no, yeah, I think it was her, where they were asking her to uh, download all the client information. They were going to pay her to do that, then go to other WFG agents before they move over, download all that client information so they can bring that over. <coughs> so technically, that would be considered confidential information because you only have that because you're in WFG system. So um, I don't know kind of what happens uh, with that. And then fraud is one of the ones that was not up here, but this basically is 
reserved kind of for the anchor leg strategy in that you're defrauding the company by sitting on the fence like that. And so if you remember, they have one spouse here, another spouse or family member here. They're kind of using both platforms at the same time and allowing them to move things over and have access to things that they shouldn't have because you're not really supposed to be with two competing companies at the same time. It's okay if you want to go do something else, that's fine, but you're not really supposed to straddle the fence or sit on the fence and have a leg on both sides where you're moving information over. So that's all the things that WFG has alleged, all the things that they uh, have information coming out against. That's basically their stance on the entire lawsuit. And then GFI's response, if you take away the, um, um, I don't know, the, the feeling side of it, it all boils down to one thing. They don't dispute doing any of this stuff. All they say is that there's a uh, code in California 16600 that says that you're not supposed to have any type of contract that inhibits a person from engaging in a law, in a lawful profession, trade or business of any kind to that extent would make it void. So their whole argument is not that we're not doing any of this stuff, not that we're not having people sign NDAs, not that we're not lying, not that um, what we said was inaccurate, not that we made things up, uh, not that we're not taking clients, not that we're not taking agents, we're doing all of that stuff, but we should be allowed to do it because according to this code, you're not allowed to have any kind of requirements that restrict us from doing the business that we wanna do. So I don't know how you guys feel about that, if that's a strong enough uh, reason for you, but there's no questions here about WFG did me wrong. There's no um, evidence really of any of that stuff other than if you kind of want to take into consideration that they didn't allow Olson to do the transfer when he wanted to do it. Um, but again, we don't know that conversation. He, he might have said something like, I'm starting another company. I just want to move this over to Sandra. I don't know. So I don't know if you guys feel that that's a strong enough argument but that's all that they've brought to the table. There, there's nothing else really to digest as far as why they're doing what they're doing. That's really all we got. So I don't know. I don't know if that's enough for you guys, if that makes much of a difference on your side. Um, yeah, I don't know. So let's go through. Do you know if Eric or anyone showed up in Hawaii? Oh, I don't know. Does anybody have an answer to this? I, I don't think so. I haven't heard anything about it. Does anybody know if... Anybody from Eric's team or GFI went out to Hawaii and started recruiting people. They were, I don't know, the lawyer probably 